Hey guys, it's the most electrifying woman in travel blogging, Katie from the Kate Show blog here, and today I don't have any adventures for you, so I thought I would make this video on like things I love about living in Fayetteville, and then a few things I don't. Keep in mind, these are just my opinions, so take them, put them into pers the perspective of your own opinions, uh, but I hope if you are going to be moving here, and you don't know what to expect, this might give you an idea of uh, some of the things at least I love and don't love about it. And if you are going to be moving here, stay tuned because in the next few weeks I am going to be posting a guide of like things to know before you get here that'll be much less opinionated and much more like practical objective advice. So stay tuned for that one too. So let's get into it. We'll start with the things I don't love so we can end on a high note. Uh, but keep in mind it was way easier for me to think of things I love than what I didn't love. I really believe that like, like attracts like, you know, if you're looking for negative in a place or a person or whatever, you'll find it. And if you're open and looking for positive things, you'll find it. So your experiences like have a lot to do with your attitude, in, just in my opinion. But we'll get into the things I don't love as much first. Number one is the driving. Now, the driving has been one of the biggest shocks and things to adjust to for me personally. Um, this is how it feels like for me. Around Fayetteville, it just seems like people drive with a careless and entitled attitude and also like they're just not paying attention to what they're doing or where they're going at all. And they could be America generally, because I'm not from here, but like my experience is in Fayetteville, right? So that's what I have to talk about. Um, but yeah, it's, it's crazy. And I also think with the carelessness, there's like a socioeconomic uh, demographic element to it uh, because you don't really care about your car if you've just stolen it. And if you crash this one, you'll just steal another one. You know what I mean? And I had some crackhead out on bail in a stolen car with no license, no insurance, pass out at the wheel while drunk or high or both and destroy my car and just head on collision. So like, that's not being like dramatic. That actually happened. And it's like, I see crashes every day. There's a lot of car theft here and it's just like a careless attitude towards driving, um, at least in the places I go each day. In terms of what to expect, I think you can expect a lot of like last minute, taking an exit off a highway when you were just half a second earlier on all the way in the fast lane and they just cut right across like as if they just don't know where they're going. They're like, oh, that's the exit I need, you know, um, just like not paying attention. Um, lots of like cutting to take a turning lane when they were so far away from it and yeah, it just feels like not paying attention, not present, not in the moment, and expecting everyone else to adjust around them when they need to do last minute things. They also, it seems like people have a lot of confidence or arrogance without the actual driving skills to back it up. So you can expect things like people flying onto the merge ramp uh, on a highway and full of overconfident driving, like they come in so strong. And then so you adjust, you give them a little room to just, because it they're acting like they're gonna come straight in. And then they, when it comes time to it, they just like hesitate, freak out, and they slow down. And so then they're hesitating and you're getting a lot of mixed messaging because you're speaking the language of the road, right? So it's just, it's it's <laughs> a little crazy. There's a few things going on that uh, I, I'm not used to anyway. There's also one thing that I call the American swerve. And it's just like floating in a lane so much. People do this all the time. Like, I think they're just not paying attention enough and they just like float. A little too much and I think sometimes particularly in the evenings uh, it's a good chance it's drunk driving related Americans seem to have a terrifyingly casual attitude towards drunk driving uh, I've noticed at barbecues and stuff but I think generally like Americans do a lot of stuff they're never just doing one thing they're like the multitaskers of the world and so they're not just driving they're also sipping a latte, they're yelling at their kids, they're watching a movie, they're emailing their boss for work or something, they've got a laptop out, they're writing a screenplay, like they're just doing so much all the time. So I think that's maybe some of the swerves uh, that you just need to look out for. So whatever it is, I don't really know, but it does seem like people here, they're not very active drivers, not very present, and so it means you have to be very reactive, and it just uh, it stresses me out a little because you can't read the language of the road because it's very unpredictable. Number two is the weather. Now, the weather in Fayetteville is actually pretty awesome. Like you don't have super harsh winters where you're getting snowed in and driving on icy roads and all that stuff. Like it's actually pretty mild and pretty nice. The thing 
why it made it into this video the thing I don't like about the weather here is that in winter especially it's really unpredictable and it'll go from you'll have cold weather and you'll think this is it we're cold now you know and then you'll have a couple of days of like really hot weather where you're in winter in the middle of winter like in a t-shirt and shorts and then it goes back to cold so it's like really up and down it's been like that lately and the only reason this made it to my list is probably not even relevant to everyone but I get eczema at change of seasons so that constant changing like my skin is on fire and it's doing the changes like it's been doing it this week so like my skin's actually all peeling off my face and it's just very itchy so that's why I made it to my list if you get any eczema with change of seasons the winter's probably gonna be a little bit annoying but I will say that the most of the year is really good and and fine and stable and then it gets into winter and it just goes like really really up and down and changing each day so it's hard to plan what to wear for a start because you have to go outside and be like are we hot today are we cold today what's going on um but then yeah also if you have weather related skin conditions lucky you uh <laughs> you might be a little uncomfortable so number three this one we can't avoid it is kind of crackhead central in some areas uh, so you can't we can't just gloss over and miss the fact that there is a lot of poverty there is a lot of drugs there is a lot of crime and there is a lot of homelessness and that just exists here um, when I think about Fayetteville it's just been a real experience, you know, and I really love it, but it's not to slander it at all, but I have to stay true to my experience. And I've only been here a little over a year after 30 something years of living like a fairly quiet mundane life. And then I come here, I had that crackhead head on car collision. Um, I, one time I took my dog for a walk outside, there was a dead body. Um, one time there was a guy blocking a really large like four way intersection, running around, pants off, waving his dick at all the car windows and like nobody's flinching, everyone's like, well, there's another day in Fayetteville, you know, and he blocked that whole intersection for ages. Um, there's been multiple broad daylight shootings. If you don't hear gunshots one day, it's probably a weird day. There's a lot of homelessness, street hassle in parking lots. I've had a lot of street hassle um, being asked for money a lot in like parking lots. It's definitely not all of Fayetteville. There are some really, really nice areas around here, but there's also some not so nice areas. So if you're gonna be moving here, just do your research as much as possible and try and find a really good area. We kind of had a last minute move and just got thrown into what was available after like way too long of living in a hotel. And uh, the place we got, the apartments are, are amazing. I love them, but the area, not so much like I wouldn't eat I can't even like take my dog for a walk outside the apartment gates because it gets real sketchy real fast and the times I have tried to like there's someone there to harass me like every single time so I definitely miss the calm relaxing neighborhood vibes just where you don't have to like uh, be on edge like I feel like I'm on edge more than I should be more than is probably healthy uh, for the adrenal system uh, so I, I do miss like just being able to sort of relax a bit more and as far as I understand it's been cleaned up a lot over the years but uh, from what I've you know talked to people and understood it was cleaned up from like the downtown area and then that's just like spread outwards into sort of these areas where people live so it's come a long way in my opinion it has a long way to go still and hopefully they can uh, improve some of these things but uh, just wanted to say that I have to be true to my experience and that's one thing I don't love about living here and as far as like safety I limit my outings after dark um, unless I really have to I just don't um, there's two main areas that I try to avoid they have some good shops so like I don't never go there but I just try and like limit my time there and that's Yadkin Road and I don't know the pronunciation but Skibo, Skybo, Skibo however you pronounce that one I stay away from that road as well uh, they seem to be a little bit sketchy you pretty much just never go to Walmart after dark it may be on a buddy system but I mostly just try to avoid it last one for what I don't love about Fayetteville is just that it's not very one car friendly and this one might not be relevant uh, if you're an American you probably already live in that two car life but uh, my husband and I share one car and when it comes to Fayetteville and sharing one car it's a lot more difficult because everything is so spread out like you're just dealing with such a bigger area 
and then most areas like are not the most uh, walking friendly or cycling friendly so for the person who doesn't have the car that day the options are much more limited it's also not great public transport so you're you're pretty limited if you don't have the car that day um, i've got a lot of work done this year for the days i didn't have the car but uh, that's just one thing I would keep in mind if you're a family that shares one car it gets a little more difficult and a little more expensive so if you're doing the drop-off pickup thing you're gonna be you know, covering a bit more distance and spending a little bit more fuel if you are a one-car family perhaps living on the base just would be logistically a lot easier and make a bit more sense uh, maybe in hindsight that would be better for us I don't know uh, but something to keep in mind and that's just the last thing that I don't love about living here. Uh, again, really subjective to our situation and minor, but that's my list. There's much more to love though, so let's get into the good stuff. Number one, there's so much to do. Now this was one of the things, I was so apprehensive about moving to like Fayetteville area or Fort Bragg life because I'd heard so many horror stories that it's just this little town, it's really shitty and there's nothing to do. And in my humble opinion, that's just like a laziness of thought. You know, and it's like I said, if you're looking for negative, you'll find it. If you're looking for positive, you'll find it. Um, if anyone tells you there's just nothing to do and it's really boring, I mean, I would just disregard that because there's just so much to do. And if you follow my blog, like, I've only been here just over a year and I've done a ton of stuff. And if I had my own car, I would have done like triple that, right? So my issue is mostly logistical. So like, there's just so much. Like, I've had a great time adventuring, exploring not only Fayetteville, but all the surrounding areas, like there's just so much around and it feels like there's a lot of variety. So it's not like you only have to be interested in the outdoors to find things to do or just cities. Like they have cities, they have outdoors, they have beaches, there's like museums and stuff. Like there's just so much to do. And that's one thing I really love. If North Carolina feels like an elite state because it's just got everything. And in case you're just watching this video and you've never heard of my blog, my main thing is that I write detailed blog guides, adventure guides of things to do in the area just to make the planning side way easier for you. So I'll leave a link in the description, check it out. You can go to the North Carolina section and get a ton of new adventures uh, for you maybe this year to fill your life with adventure here. And bonus, you can also download my Fort Bragg bucket list I made, which is a huge downloadable list of adventures that you can just tick off as you go. There's one right behind me. I have my own that I'm ticking off. And it also has unique events you don't want to miss and some leave vlog long weekend ideas. So it really is everything you need to fill this chapter full of adventures. Number two is the food. So I'm not really a foodie in terms of like fancy food. I'm from a place called Humpty Doo. It's not exactly the fancy capital of the world, but I am an eater. You know what I mean? Like I love to eat. And if you're in Fayetteville and you love to eat, you're in a good place because there is so, so much great food here, lots of great options, and these portions that are ginormous, like you literally never go hungry. So you're in a good place if you like to eat. I've recently become pretty smitten with brisket. That's like my latest obsession. Uh, but there's all sorts of good food places, different styles and everything from some nicer restaurants just to local food trucks. And that's one thing I really love is like the local food truck culture because they have so many around here and they just drive around, park at different places each day. And you can find like so many unique um, and different ideas, different options. And then you can just follow their Facebook page. You, you know, you find one you like, you follow its Facebook page so you can see where it is each day. So that's one thing I really love too. As far as my favorites in Fayetteville, um, I really love, I tried the fried turkey sandwich shop just recently and had, I think it was called the Turkey Day sandwich. It was like Thanksgiving meal in a sandwich. That was pretty epic. Um, I also, I really love the Blue Moon Cafe when I want to like sit down and have something nicer that's downtown or I think Gaston Brewery is what it's called. And there's also a Southern Coles Barbecue in Fayetteville as well that I really like. So those are probably my top four that are coming to my head right now, but uh, there's plenty of great stuff and a lot to keep you full. Number three on the things that I love is how awesome downtown Fayetteville is. It's very cool. It's got like the convenience of a small town in terms that you can usually always find free or at least very cheap parking. You don't have to like go to a whole separate area in a big parking complex, pay, you know, $20 or something for a short time and then walk all the way over to actually get to the downtown area. You can find a lot of street parking that's free or cheap. And then it's, it is a small area. So you only have like that convenience of only needing to walk within a few streets. So that's really good. Convenience of a small town mixed with like 
the charming escapism of a bigger city and it's just got so much there you can go down for a day trip or you can go in for a date night uh, there's a lot of cool shops i really like seeing the different cool local shops there it's got uh coffee shops with outdoor dining restaurants with outdoor dining art museum fairy lights crafty outings like you can paint candles you can take a succulent class you can uh what's there's another one where you paint pottery there's just a lot going on there so it can feel almost like a cool little staycation getaway you know and the last one for things i love is the state pride i really love how people in north carolina love north carolina and there's a big openness to sharing it with others and i've lived in some places where people sort of hoard adventures, hoard the good stuff, and have a lot of like animosity towards new people or people that aren't from there. And I really haven't got that vibe in North Carolina at all. It's been a lot of like uh, welcoming vibes, warmth, hospitality, and sharing like things to do here, sharing the things they love about being here. In a lot of the hiking groups I'm in on Facebook, there's always been like a good openness to sharing things and giving a lot of detail and like helping people get to the adventures and just talking with people as well like it's it's been very like warm and open and uh hospitable and don't get me wrong there's like all the annoying stuff that goes with any other facebook group as well uh it's not like a dream place or anything but the overall vibe i get is very positive and um very very proud of the state and just wanting to share it with others so i really really love that about here and they just have a lot to be proud of. North Carolina is such a cool place, so there's I totally get that at the same time. So that's it for the things I love and don't love. I'm interested to hear what you think, so leave yours. If you have any you know, similarities or differences or whatever, just leave it in the comments. We'll have a chat. Otherwise, I'll also leave my links to my website and uh, the Fort Bragg bucket list in the description, so check those out if you want even more things to do in and around Fayetteville. If you liked it, like the video. Tell YouTube you liked the video, and subscribe if you loved it, and otherwise, that's it for me. I'll see you next time. Bye.